Hey guys, in this video we're going to be going over part of your OCR gateway physics, the part on matter. Now I'm going to take you through everything here and you can follow along with this, checking bits off as you go using the free revision guide, the free checklist which is available for you to download on my website. And also on my website there are thousands of multiple choice questions to help you revise. Atom is incredibly tiny. The word atom means uncuttable, and it's so tiny that the Greeks who named it an atom thought it was the smallest thing. But it isn't the smallest thing. We know there are things inside of it. Now, I said it was incredibly tiny. Its size is 0.1 to 0.5 nanometers, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 10 to 5 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Now, inside our atom, we have protons and neutrons, and in the shells on the outside, we have electrons. This bit in the middle here, this is called a nucleus. Protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus, whereas electrons in the outer shells Protons have a mass of 1, neutrons have a mass of 1, and electrons are incredibly tiny. Their mass is 1 2 thousandths that of mass of a proton or a neutron. Protons have a charge of plus 1, neutrons have no overall charge, and electrons have a charge of minus 1. Pressure, with a P, equals height times density, which is a lowercase rho, times gravitational field strength. Pressure is measured in pascals, height is measured in meters, density is measured in kilograms per meters cubed, and gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Here we have boron, the mass number is 11, the atomic number is 5, so if you want to find the number of neutrons, that is mass minus atomic, 11 minus 5 gives us 6, protons equal 5, electrons equal 5. Now, protons have a positive charge, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Electrons have a negative charge, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So an atom, and this is for an atom only, will have the same number of positive charges and negative charges, which means there is going to be no overall charge in an atom. An iron is going to have lost or gained electrons. So, for example, if we have our, take our boron again, with our 1, 2, 3, 4, five positive and one, two, three, four, five negative charges. If it loses an electron, it now no longer has the same number of positive and negative charges, so it's going to be charged. It has created an ion. On the periodic table, you will see two numbers. The larger number of the two is the mass number. The smaller number of the two is the atomic number. It does not matter where these are located. Different um, books, exam boards are going to put these in different locations. It does not matter where these are located. The mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The atomic number is equal to the number of protons and also equal to the number of electrons in an atom. So if you want to find the number of protons, that is equal to the atomic number. 
It was if you want to find the number of neutrons that is equal to the mass number minus the atomic number. The model of the atom has changed a lot over time, and it's changed because we have new developments and new discoveries. From ancient Greece, where they developed the word atom, uncuttable, to Dalton, where it was a solid sphere, J.J. Thompson, who discovered the electrons, where we had a plum pudding model, a positive sphere with negative bits dotted through it. Rutherford, who did the plum pudding um, experiment and worked out that it had a solid centre. Bohr, who developed um, the nuclear model of the atom. Now, I know the writing's very small on here. That's because you don't need to know the exact details. You just need to know the overall developments. Rutherford gave us the positive centre, which we call the nucleus. Chadwick added in neutrons, and then Bohr developed this nuclear model that we use today, with a positive centre and electrons orbiting outside. Solid particles are in a fixed position. They do vibrate, but very, very slightly, and it is around a fixed position. They do not move around. Liquid particles move around much more. They're still touching each other, but they're not in a fixed position. They are moving about randomly. It's still rather limited movement. It's still within a confined space. Unlike gas, which is free to move and zip around all over the place. If we're going to be putting energy in, then we are going to be turning a um, solid into a liquid or we are going to be evaporating a liquid into a gas. If energy is coming out of the system, a gas is going to be condensing or a liquid is going to be freezing. Density is the amount of mass in a set volume. So, mass in a set volume. And this is the same for the equation. And the equation for this is rho. I know it looks like a lowercase p, but it's not. It's a lowercase rho equals mass over volume. The units you need to know for this, mass is measured in kilograms, volume is measured in meters cubed, and density is measured in kilograms per meters cubed. Specific heat capacity is how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree. Our equation for that is change in energy equals mass times civic heat capacity times change in temperature. Specific heat capacity is going to be particular to whatever substance they're talking about, and they would tell you this. I wouldn't expect them to expect you to know this. Our units for energy are joules. Our units for mass, kilograms. Our units of change in temperature are degrees C. And specific heat capacity is joules per kilogram degrees C. There is not an extra per in here. That is a space in there. Specific latent heat is how much energy is needed to change a substance from a solid to a liquid at the melting point. And remember, if a substance is pure, it will change instantly at one temperature. The equation for this is energy equals mass times specific latent heat. Our units for this are going to be joules for energy. Ma mass is going to be measured in kilograms. And specific latent heat is joules per kilogram. When we're looking at the collection of molecules in a system and the amount of energy they have, we are going to have two bell-shaped curves. At low temperatures, there are going to be more molecules that have less energy 
and few molecules that have high energy. Now, if we say that this point here is where molecules have enough energy to evaporate, then only these ones at low temperature can evaporate. However, at high temperature, more molecules have more energy. So there's still going to be some with a low temperature, but the majority of them are now going to have a high temperature, meaning more of them are going to have passed this threshold for evaporation. And the average kinetic energy is going to be the area under the graph. So as molecules evaporate, they're going to be leaving this section of the graph. So evaporation is actually going to lower the average kinetic energy of a system. In this video, I'm using a simulation from the excellent FET website. You can see here we have a closed container and I'm adding in gas here and we can see the pressure. As the pressuring, as the more gas goes in, we can see the pressure is increasing. So it's stabilised. I'm going to add in lots more gas here and you can see the pressure is going to increase. So as the gas bumps against the walls of the container, it's exerting um, a small force, it's doing work on there and is going to be increasing the pressure in the system. Pressure equals force over area. The units for pressure are pascals. For force it is newtons and for area it is meters squared. I have seen exam questions which use newtons per meter squared for pressure. If they do that in the exam question give your answer in the same format. I've also seen exam questions where they've done newtons per centimetre squared. So if the question is in that format, give your answer in that format. This is one that you have to pay attention to because they could be sneaky here. If we want to work out the pressure in the system, that is volume times a constant. The constant you'll be told in the exam. Our units for pressure are pascals. Our units for volume are metres cubed. A fluid can either be a liquid or a gas. Liquids are incompressible. The examples like that word. Or as gases are compressible. Pressure with a P equals height times Density, which is a lowercase rho, times gravitational field strength. Pressure is measured in pascals. Height is measured in metres. Density is measured in kilograms per metres cubed. And gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too